We didn't realize what was going on that night. We were driving down a very dark road, but it was the road that we were so familiar with. And then in one second, our whole life was changed forever. Jennifer loved life. She was definitely a daddy's girl. She loved to memorize scripture and she loved to sing songs about the Lord. The night of our accident was the first night that she had sang in a choir concert. And she just praised the Lord with all her heart. It was a great concert. It was a great night. You could just feel the spirit of the Lord in the place. All the kids did a great job, but Jennifer shined. And she was singing to the Lord, and you could just see it all over her face. All four of us were in the same vehicle driving home together. We were just talking and laughing and having a good time. And uh, then I heard Dad say, watch out. And I mean, after that, everything went black. Oh, well, I got a head-on collision with another vehicle. I need rest of the fire here now. He actually hit us head on, the drunk driver going about 80 miles an hour, fleeing from the police. He did not have his lights on. I didn't see him. I could not avoid him. I remember like screaming mom and no one answered and like dad and no one answered. All of a sudden I am waking up and my head is crammed up next to this windshield and um, there's broken glass, you know, and, and you know, I'm wondering how did I get here? Well, I got two adults and two juveniles I've never ever seen something as horrific as that accident that night. The EMTs on the scene were able to get the gen first. Well, I got uh, one juvenile female unresponsive. And when I saw Jen, there was no doubt in my mind that this child had, had been killed in this car accident. Jen was hanging on. We didn't even know if she'd make it to Charlottesville. They were airlifting her. And all I could think of this, this family is never going to be the same. She had suffered a very, very severe brain injury and her score, her coma score, was as low as you can get without actually uh, being dead. We were taken to four different hospitals. And that was hard, knowing that um, they were going to take your child to another hospital. We were told Jennifer wasn't going to make it. Anna, I had to decide, but I stayed with Linda. I knew I couldn't help Jennifer, but I could be there for my friend. In the whole night, we prayed. And we had hundreds of people in the waiting room on their knees that night, all night, begging God to save Jen's life. They implanted a, a pole in her head to monitor her brain uh, swelling. I mean, she had tubes coming out of everywhere. Jen looked very broken and very, you just didn't know if she was ever going to be the same. The first day that I saw her was just devastating to me. And the thing that gave me such hope, there was a little janitor woman named Christine. And she said to me, I've seen Jennifer and God's in that girl. And I thought, how could she know God's in her? Because Jen's asleep, she's not awake. And she said, she's gonna be okay. And that was like the Lord just giving me a glimmer of hope because nurses and doctors couldn't give us that hope. When you emerge from that type of coma, it's not like they just wake up. She didn't know her name. She didn't know what day it was. She couldn't walk. Jen could barely speak. Um, when she did speak, it was muttered words. But when she prayed, she had a normal voice, and it sounded like Jennifer. I lift you up and thank you and praise you. Thank you. One day that I will never forget, I'm sitting next to her bed in the wheelchair, and she's praying. Lord, thank you for healing me and raising me up. And I'm just weeping next to her bedside because she can't even sit up. It's a process of emerging, and then it's a process of healing, 
and from stage to stage to stage. As a mom, we, we don't ever want to see our children suffer. It's gut-wrenching, it's heartbreaking, it's the worst nightmare for a parent to see your child suffering, really. They're suffering because of sins of someone else, not choices that they've made. And I could not make sense of that. Why would a loving God do that to a beautiful little 15-year-old girl that loves him with his whole heart? Yeah, I was extremely angry. Um, you know, it was a very emotional time. Forgiveness is huge, because forgiveness sets you free. Literally, there were times I thought, I, I can't do this. I mean, I can't. How can I forgive? Forgiveness is really hard. I think we can't forgive in our own strength. It was very hard to forgive the gentleman that hit us. I, for a while, just didn't even have that desire. I couldn't even, I was just, I was mad, you know? I didn't ask for this brain injury, and then my eyes were greatly affected, and I struggle with headaches very severely. I actually have a headache right now, so I prayed many times, you know, Lord, almost more of make my heart right so that I can forgive him. And it's a choice that we have to make. But in my own strength, I can't forgive. But I cry out to God and say, Lord, help me to be able to forgive. And God does give me the strength. It's very hard. And that forgiveness to me, it's a process. By forgiving him, I knew that the Lord could forgive me. Like, I didn't want my unforgiveness to almost hinder what the Lord could do in me and through me. And I think that is pretty much what made me realize how much I needed to forgive Him. Christ has always been the center of our family, but I feel like it, He's been magnified to where like, you know, He like totally leads our family and like we can actually, we have a story to kind of give to, um, to, you know, to go share to people. Before the accident, I was that very shy and very quiet girl. And so now to think I'm up on stage speaking, it's almost hard to believe. I think the Lord uh, speaks through us and allows uh, the audience to realize, oh, well, look how he's using Jennifer in spite of her brain injury. Oh. I I'm sure he can use me too, and so I just I hope it gets across that message of hope and just helps people believe that the Lord doesn't waste trials and that he does have a plan and a purpose for everything. It may not be a drunk driver running your family over, but it may be a loss of a loved one. It may be a doctor's report. It may be broken marriage. It may be many different things. Life hurts, it's tough. Jesus Christ is the answer. Jen has a bracelet and I will not take it off. Um, it's a miracle for Jen and it's 1 Corinthians 2, 9. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind can conceive what God has prepared for those who love him. That's the hope.